Hi, my name is Aki, and in this review, we're going to take a look at one of the most controversial helmets available on the market right now. The Rurock RG1 DX series of helmets. Aesthetics. Let's get started with the obvious. This helmet is either incredibly badass looking or really really stupid looking depending on your perspective. It's polarizing to say the least. Lots of people love it for its stormtrooper sci-fi aesthetics, however it's also heavily criticized for being a noob helmet that only losers wear. Personally, I think it's less of the look that draws all the judgement, but rather the incredibly steep price tag that leads to all the hate. And knowing that someone spent all that money just to look like George or Jorge, however you pronounce it, from Halo Reach, well, it makes, it makes some people jealous. Or maybe they just really don't like the way it looks. Who cares? All that matters is whether you like it or not, because, I mean, after all, you're getting the helmet for yourself, not the guy who's shitting all over it. And I, for one, happen to like the way it looks. I think it looks pretty cool. The helmet comes in a vast variety of graphic designs. There's pretty much one for everyone's taste. I just got the plain black one because, well, I guess I'm boring. Ratings. Alright, now onto the less obvious stuff. This Death Trooper-esque helmet is certified for snow sports, skating, and cycling. Boasting EN1077A, EN1078, and ASTM F2040 ratings, this helmet is well equipped. If you want to know more about these ratings and what they mean, check out my video guide on helmet safety standards right here. It's important to note that despite its full face appearance, this helmet is not rated for downhill mountain biking or skating. That would require the ASTM F1952 rating. More on that later on. Visibility. Well, visibility is exactly what you would get looking out of any pair of ski goggles. Which is fine for snow sport users because you're already used to wearing snow goggles. So your field of view with this helmet is pretty much the same. However, us e-skaters might find the field of view extremely limited compared to proper longboarding full face helmets such as the TSG Pass. I've been wearing this in place of my 888 downhill racer helmet for the last couple of weeks and from what I can tell you, <laughs> it's an awesome feeling helmet. However, the restrictive visibility might actually be dangerous for city street skaters because you're not going to have good peripherals to see all those cars around you. It's kind of hard to see what's not directly in front of you. But if you're on a relatively spacious or empty trail, then this helmet really makes me feel like one of those speeder bike stormtroopers. It's downright fantasy fulfilling stuff. It's, it's a lot of fun. Ventilation. Here's somewhere this helmet really shines. It's got some of the best engineered ventilation holes I've ever seen on a full coverage helmet. Coming from my 888 racer helmet, I was constantly fogging up the visor just by breathing. I had to extend my upper lip over my lower lip to direct my breath downward away from the visor just to keep it clear. It also got really hot in there. But with the Rurock, I can breathe as hard as I want and it's not going to fog. I actually tried to fog up the goggles but the vents cut out everywhere just makes fogging impossible. The helmet also remains incredibly cool even during rigorous use. Another pro of having good air intake on the front of the mask is that you can speak clearly through it unlike other full face helmets that tend to muffle you out. This is a huge plus. Okay, when it comes to comfort, I personally find it to be one of the most comfortable helmets I've ever worn. I feel good enough in it that I think I could walk the path of the Mandalorian and never remove my helmet. Convenience. Now, when it comes to ease of use, this helmet is honestly a little bit complicated. It's essentially a three-piece setup that requires multiple steps to put on. First, you put on the top half of the helmet, which is the main protective shell. Then you attach the mouthpiece, which goes in on both sides. 
Then you pull down the goggles. Pull the mouthpiece down a little bit so the goggles can fit nicely behind it, that little notch there. If you try to put it on or take it off while the mouthpiece is still attached, you will quickly find yourself stuck. You can take your goggles off while the mouthpiece is attached, but when you go to put it back on, make sure you, you pull down the mouthpiece a little bit and tuck it behind, because otherwise, you see, it's not flush. It's not sitting flush right now, but if you pull it down, push it back, it's kind of finicky, but there we go, then you got that nice seamless integration. That's, that's how it's meant to fit so the goggles don't move anywhere when you're moving around. It's really secure. Taking it off requires removing the mouthpiece first before the rest of the helmet, meaning you're kind of always stuck dealing with this awkward mouthpiece. I wish they designed it so that the mouthpiece could be extended outwards and then close again for putting on and taking off the helmet. Kind of like Kylo Ren's helmet or something. That would make things a lot simpler. You can use the helmet without the chin bar as well, but then you end up looking like this. Besides, if you got this, you definitely got this to use with the face mask. That's part of the whole point of this helmet. What they did do really well though, was their chin strap device. They call it the Fidlock, and it's a magnetic clasp that closes automatically, but requires sliding the clasps apart to remove it. It's secure and incredibly convenient. Quick to close and only comes apart when you want it to. Boop. When you want to change up your goggle lenses, you don't have to worry about actually switching out the goggles, which are attached like any other snow sport helmet via a little clip on the back of the helmet and secure silicone lining so that these straps don't slip. So instead of removing your goggles, Rurock has designed a magnet and clasp system that allows you to directly change the lenses. You just pop open the clasp and your lenses magnetically are removable. It's really neat, except for it means you can only use their proprietary lenses, which aren't cheap, but they do come in awesome tints. For night rides, I find myself removing the lenses entirely and going lensless. You can also just pull the goggles up instead of removing the lenses if things get dark, but I kind of like the way it looks without the lens. Compatibility. When it comes to accessories, this helmet has some cool features. Firstly, the plastic visor can be removed to reveal an integrated action camera mount. This is so much better than sticking a mount on your, a random place on your helmet, kind of like what I did here. It's also useful for mounting lights if you plan on doing some night rides. All in all, a great design choice. When it comes to an in-helmet audio system, Rurock offers their proprietary shockwave system, which is a helmet neck liner that fits in around here with integrated headphones and controls. Now, version 1 of Shockwave was admittedly pretty terrible. The buttons were hard to reach and the left and right side of the headphones often had inconsistent volumes. But version 2 is out and supposedly it's better. Is it actually? Find out in my Shockwave review below. The coolest thing with this speaker system is that it's completely integrated into the helmet. No external clip-ons or anything. So it adds to that further sci-fi space marine helmet look with legit built-in comms. It's, it's pretty cool. As for what it comes with in the box, when you take the helmet out, you get various instruction manuals, a survival guide, which are all useless, um, some tags that let you know that your helmet comes included with a RECO reflector which helps avalanche rescue teams or whatnot find you through some sort of reflective radio technology which helps rescue teams find you in the event that you get lost or trapped underneath an avalanche. They also throw in two sizer pads that go on the inside of your helmet to give you a snugger fit if you need. But most importantly, it comes with stickers of their logo and the helmet, so you can uh, stick it on your various devices and advertise for them for free. And even more importantly, 
they include a bottle opener in the shape of one of their Rurok helmets. That's pretty, that's pretty cute. All right, my final point is coming back to that downhill rating that this helmet does not have. Why? Well, because to be certified as a downhill helmet, it needs a proper impact chin bar that's capable of withstanding a direct hit to the ground going at full speed. Splat. The Rurok, however, sports only a plastic mouthpiece that contains no structural support of any kind. It's basically just a hard piece of plastic. It is nicely lined with some sort of slightly squishy fabric though. Lots of haters have pointed out that if you face planted at a considerable speed, then the mask would probably explode and send plastic shards into your face. That's obviously an over-exaggeration or overactive imagination. The reality is that the mask is malleable enough that I feel like it would just squash and deform a little rather than splinter into a thousand pieces. It might not be able to handle a full speed chin plant, however, if a pebble or branch hits you in the face, this mouthpiece will protect you. In fact, it's not as fragile as you might think, well at least according to Rurok's own official tests, which you can find here. Apparently they think it compares with the downhill standards. What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. Considering all the evidence out there and my personal opinion, I think you should skate with the same level of caution as you would with a regular half-shell helmet. Just because this mask, while offering some level of protection, doesn't offer the same level of protection as a legitimate chin bar. This helmet contains Rurog's Rion liner technology. According to them, rheology is a branch of physics that deals with the flow of matter and how matter reacts when force is applied to it. They got some fancy scientists at Imperial College of London to develop it, and according to them, their liner is made of non-Newtonian fluid that hardens upon impact, reducing the chance of brain injuries by up to 30%, or so they say. Price. Now, here is the biggest criticism of this helmet. It's bloody expensive. I for one would never buy it for its full price. However, if you can score a good deal on it somewhere, maybe eBay or something like that, then I think it's totally worth it. Alright, there you have it folks, my thoughts on the RG1 DX series of helmets by Rurok. Out of 10, I'm gonna give them an 8. Is it good for e-skating? Well, if you can live with a snow goggle field of view, then it is absolutely amazing for e-skating. You never have to worry about eating another bug again, it just splats or it bounces off. But if you need a wider field of vision, then I'm sorry, this helmet is really not for you. Remember, while it offers more protection than a standard half shell, it does not match the level of protection from a proper full face helmet. It's sort of somewhere in between the two in terms of protection. Alright, that's all I got. If you liked this video and found it informative, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel, as well as give me a thumbs up so I know that I should keep making these kinds of videos. What do you think about the Rurok RG1 DX series of helmets? Love it? Hate it? Let me know in the comment section below. Boasting EN1077A, EN1078, is that B or A? Wait, what? I don't actually. I'm gonna have to do a quick search here. Where's my I need a device? I need a I need a device.